Hey everybody, welcome back to Run and Gun. I'm JT, and we are here in Adobe Lightroom Classic, and we're gonna be doing a tutorial on this dark and moody, or dark green foresty look. Here's the before, here's the after. I'm excited about how these came out. Just a quick little backstory about these photos. They were all taken in Gatlinburg, Tennessee during the fall. Here's the before, here's the after. And you can see here's one I just kind of edited normally before, after, just to see what it would look like. Just kind of a normal, you know, woodsy fall kind of feel. And then I wanted to go for more of this dark and moody vibe, which again, you can see here in some of these leaves. Again, before and after, I really enjoy this look that we're gonna get here with this tutorial. And we found this cabin in the woods. Here's the before and the after. And I really just wanted to add this kind of moody, almost eerie kind of green foresty feel to it. Here's some kind of cool mushrooms we found on the hike before and after. And a lot more of these mushrooms edited with the same look. And I just really enjoy the way these came out. And here is a little snail as well. I really like how this image turned out. And I love how these colors turned out in this edit. And also some leaves here because I love capturing fall colors. It's one of my favorite times of the year. But without further ado, let's hop into this tutorial. I'm gonna show you guys how to recreate this look and I'm really excited about it. So let's hop into it. So as you can see here, if I press the letter I on the keyboard, we can cycle through. You can see these were my settings. I photographed these on my Lumix GH6. I used a mix of my Helios lens and I also had an Olympus 25 millimeter lens, I believe, with me as well. So that was a mix of those two lenses and obviously my GH6. So let's take a look at this image right here. I really like these leaves. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a virtual copy by right clicking, clicking virtual copy. And now we have an identical copy of our image. Again, this does not create another copy on your hard drive, so you're not taking up extra space. It's literally just creating another edit or another XML style file saying what edits you made to the photo. It's not creating a duplicate of the photo itself. And if that's at all confusing for you guys, be sure to watch my 30 days of Lightroom tutorials and I will make it absolutely clear as mud. So what we're going to do now is right click, go to settings, reset this image, and now we are back to zero. Everything has been zeroed out. This is our nice dark image of these leaves. I actually took this a little bit underexposed just to make sure I didn't blow out these highlights. And I knew I was gonna go for a dark and moody look back when I was shooting this photo. So again, we have kind of a dark image here. We're gonna start with our calibration tab up in the upper right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move our shadows towards the green here a little bit, maybe negative 20. And that's gonna add more of this green look to our shadows. We are going to move our oranges towards the red. Eh, negative 27, that sounds pretty good. And we're also going to desaturate our red primary here about the same as well. That will just go and desaturate some of these darker leaves down here. Next, we're going to move our greens a little bit away from yellow and towards cyan. Just a hint, not too far. We don't wanna take this super blue just a little bit towards the blues, and then just desaturate a hint. Then we're gonna take our blue primary, move that hue towards the cyan, uh, somewhere around 25, and also desaturate this a hint as well. So now we can see the before and the after, just a little bit more moody there, a little bit darker. We took the highlights down a little bit, and now we're gonna close our calibration tab, and we're gonna open up our basic toning tab right here. For starters, we will take our color profile and I will change that to Adobe Portrait. You can see that gives us just a little bit of a flatter profile and a little bit more dynamic range. Now this image is a touch dark. We are going to turn that up just a hint. 
get a little bit more exposure, brighten it up a touch, give it a little bit of contrast because we did widen that dynamic range. I'm just making sure I don't blow out my highlights and clip or overexpose my highlights. So I will actually bring those highlights down and we are going to stretch out that dynamic range a little bit by going plus about 1.4, 1.5, and then trimming our highlights back a little bit. We're going to add just a touch to the shadows. We don't want to go overkill. We don't want to see all that detail in the background. We have like a nice natural vignette going on here, which I really like. We'll add a little bit to our whites, just a touch. You can see if I slide it, we just get that little bit of pop and then bring our blacks down a hint about right there. So you can see this is what our basic toning has done. We've added some pop and some contrast here. And I'll go back and I'll play with our white balance slider a little bit. I'll probably zero out our tint. That looks good. And probably make this a little bit cooler. I think somewhere around 4,500 is probably safe. And now our white balance is looking a little bit cooler. So this looks great so far. I want to add, let's see, a little bit of a softness. So I'm going to take our clarity slider and just turn it down a tiny bit. It just feels overly sharp right now. You don't want to crank this all the way down. That looks like garbage. We don't want to do that. We just want to add a hint of softness. And I think that looks good right there. And maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of dehaze. So that's looking great so far. Let's stop where we are right now and take a look at before our toning and after our toning. And I think that is looking pretty darn good. I'm also going to take this opportunity to turn down our saturation a bit. There we go. We're getting those nice moody green foresty colors. And then we'll bring those out a touch with vibrance. Again, we don't really want to pump our saturation too much. It starts looking a little bit nasty and ugly and almost like a nuclear green that we don't love. Doesn't look very pleasing to the eye. So we'll go ahead, we'll turn our saturation down a touch. And if we want to add more color, we will do that with vibrance because vibrance is a smart slider. Again, I talk a lot about this in my 30 days of Lightroom and it works just a little bit different with color and helps keep your color tones from clipping up here. We don't want to go crazy. We'll go and we'll back off that slider just a little bit. And I think somewhere around plus 20 works. I like the way this is looking again. Here's the before and the after just a bit of pop to this image. And what we're going to do next is go into our tone curve. Now this, in my opinion, is the secret sauce for getting that moody look. I'm going to grab the point at the end, my black value, and lift it up a touch. I'm going to bring down my white value here just a touch. And then we're going to make a little bit of an S curve for a touch of contrast. Now what we did is we limited how dark our blacks can be and how bright our whites can be. So you'll see in just a second, I'll tweak this a little bit to add some contrast because we don't want to lose all the contrast in this image. We just want to limit how dark our blacks can be and how bright our white values can be. So I'll bring down the brightness a touch and I'll show you guys what this looked like before some very dark, deep, inky blacks and now we just kind of made them more of a matte color and it's just softened it up a little bit this whole image is a little bit softer now so again the before and the after we're getting that kind of moody vibe and you guys can take this as far as you want you can really lift those blacks to give it a very matted look or you can play with it somewhere in the middle i think somewhere down here with an output of maybe 20 you can see your output number right here I'll leave it at about 20, maybe 30, eh, somewhere in the middle. Let's meet in the middle at 25. And this is giving us that nice, dark, moody, foresty look. That's just kind of eerie and a little bit surreal. So that is all for our tone curve. Now we're going to play with a little more magic with our color mixer. And I will break these down one at a time. This is formerly known as HSL or hue saturation and luminance. And again, in my 30 days of Lightroom tutorials, 
I really dig into all of these. If you really want to know how these work and not just going through and sliding sliders, I will teach you guys exactly how to use these and control them for your artistic benefit. So with our color mixer open, let's start with hue and I will kind of walk you through the different decisions I make, why I make them and what you could or should or shouldn't do with your photos. So I'm going to take my reds. I'm going to move those towards the red and away from the orange. It's a little bit hard to see in this image, but in another image like this, you'll start to see that we kind of get rid of the oranges in this image and we just don't want very oversaturated oranges. It just doesn't work with this look very well. The oranges really compete with the greens when they're too heavily saturated. So we will move those towards red, towards more of a complementary color. And then yellows, we will move away from the green, make them a little more orangey yellow, a little more saturated. Greens, we'll move those over just a touch. And again, very small minor edits that end up making a pretty big difference in the final image. It's hard to see now, but you can just see we're taking some of the yellows and the oranges out of the green. And what we're going to do next is go to our saturation tab, the S in HSL. We're going to turn down the saturation of our reds, maybe turn up the saturation of our oranges, trying to get those fall colors back a little bit turn down the yellow, turn down the green, kind of desaturate our greens. And I think that is good right there. Now let's go to our luminance tab, which is the brightness of individual hues. So this is pretty cool. We can take our fall colors that are red, kind of pump up the brightness a little bit. Same thing with the oranges. And maybe we want to turn down the brightness of some of the yellows. You can see here we have this dark yellow leaf that's kind of distracting. We'll also turn down the brightness of our greens just a hint and maybe our blues just a hint as well. So you can see the before and the after. It's super subtle, but in some of the other images here, it will make a huge difference, especially once you start seeing some of these yellows and some of these oranges and green colors in these images like this little mushroom guy right here. He's a touch out of focus. Let's find another one. He was a touch overexposed, but you can see we really tone back some of those reds and some of those oranges. Here's the before of this image, very kind of a nasty orange. It doesn't really work well with this moody green aesthetic. So we desaturated those, moved them a little more towards the red, gave it a little more color contrast. And you can kind of see why we moved some of those sliders where we did and you can see in this image as well i wasn't loving these yellowy green highlights so we moved some of them more towards the orange and some of the oranges more towards the red so let's go back to our fern here i really love this image we can close our basic tab we can close our calibration tab we don't need all those open we can close our color mixer i think we're done with that right now we didn't do any color grading to this image i think it looks pretty good the way it is I'm going to open up our detail tab and make sure we give this a little bit of sharpening, turn up the detail a little bit. I'm going to hit alt or option on the keyboard and I'm going to turn up our masking. Now what this is doing is this is masking areas that are white and we are adding sharpening to the areas that are white and not adding sharpening to the areas that are black. So what that does is that helps us be able to sharpen parts of our image without bringing out a ton of noise in other parts of our image. So we'll just turn up that masking to where we can see the leaves on the fern, but not a ton of the background. Turn up our sharpening a touch here and then maybe add just a little bit of noise reduction. And I really like how this turned out. We can go ahead and we can hit reset on this image and you can see the before and then you can see the after of our image that we edited here. And when we apply that edit to other images like this cabin, we get kind of this eerie vibe here. Here's the front of the cabin, the before and the after. Again, I was fighting some harsh sunlight, so I was doing my best to make these images kind of look dark and moody. Here's the before of the inside and the after. I thought this was a kind of cool image. You can see this old, old glass. There are some spider webs in here and this little 
area of highlights right there. I thought that looked cool, but you can see some of these other images, I copy and pasted the edit. All I did was right click, I went to develop settings, copy settings, and then just had to right click develop settings and paste settings. So that is an easy way to copy and paste your settings over to other images. You can also select an image, go to your next image and hit previous, and it will copy and paste your settings from the previous image. You can also select a first image that you wanna take edits from, select a range of images by hitting shift and selecting more images, and then you can sync all of these settings between images, which is super cool and saves a ton of time in editing photos. So that is all for this dark, moody, foresty green tutorial. I really enjoy how some of these photos came out. They're a lot softer and have just a different character than a plain old edit that I would have done to make this image look so-called realistic or natural to the eye. What I actually saw in real life, this is very close to what I saw in real life. So is this, it was quite dark, but this is more of the moody vibe that I want my audience to feel. You wanna give your audience a feeling, and I really don't feel like this image has much of a feeling. So same with the image if I had just brightened up the exposure. Not a ton of feeling here. However, we go back to this image, and now it evokes that moody, dark, green, foresty feeling. Let me know down below in the comments what you guys think of this video. Be sure to check out my 30 days of Lightroom tutorials, and of course, subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos. And let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see any other editing tutorials. I am absolutely open for requests. So until next time, get out and go shoot.